adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Before we dive into today's episode, we want to simply say thank you for your support. For season two, we're running a couple giveaways and we'll be selecting a couple of you to win some No Snooze merch, some products over at Orgain.com, or a $50 Amazon gift card. If you enjoy the podcast and find value in what we're doing, all you have to do is subscribe to us, leave us a five-star review on Apple, and DM us on Instagram at No Snooze Podcast, letting us know you've entered the giveaway. Thanks to all of you, the No Snooze Podcast is climbing the charts, and we're well on our way to spreading this message to the masses. Enjoy today's episode. Mike, open us up. Welcome back to the No Snooze Podcast. We have a very special guest today that Dave will introduce very shortly. Good friend of mine, client, and he is getting tanner by the second. We're going to get into that. Uh, but welcome to the podcast, Pete. Thank you, Mike, very much. And thank you, Dave. Yes, thank you, Pete. And just to say, I, listen, we're going to disclose the age as the uh, episode goes on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to be this guy. <laughs> I, I'm hoping that this is me in 20 years. In the comments, comment how old you think Pete is. <laughs> We'd be curious to see uh, what everyone thinks. Right. Uh, so, Pete, thank you again. Pete joins us as an expert in strength training, health, and fitness. He has found a unique niche in merging competitive sport performance with anti-aging and biohacking. As an athlete his entire life, Pete has been in the fitness and wellness space since 1992. He has owned and operated three different gyms, including three physical and occupational therapy clinics right here in Westchester County, New York. He has served as a sports performance coach for USA Weightlifting and current special strength coach for Westside Barbell down in Columbus, Ohio. Today, Pete remains very active in the world of bodybuilding, Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, CrossFit, high rocks, and track and field events. Since turning 50 in 2019, he has found a new passion within health and wellness, highlighting longevity and anti-aging as it pertains to men's health. Pete, we are happy to have you here. Thank you. And Thank welcome you. to the pod, man. Thank you very much, both you guys. Uh, Appreciate my it. first question, which I held back for, for the it. first 30 minutes we were talking, <laughs> yeah. how old do you plan on living? Oh, man, That's I love a, it. I've been, I don't I know. Love, how you old do you plan on living? On living. Like, what's your goal? Yeah. And you said, oh, I wow. might I, I have one. So that's a, I love that question. Love it. So uh, right off the bat, I'll tell you, I have the number. It's 120. Holy. Wow. That's my goal. Wow. Is to live to 120. Wow. But now you got to understand that the goal is not to live to 120 or to last 20 years or in a wheelchair with dementia, right. you know, and, You're and, talking and suffering. I'm talking about functional. Yeah. And healthy. And I remember who you are and you're who you're, you know, what your name is yeah. and all that. Otherwise, I don't see the point in, in trying to yes. live that long. So right. the good news and well, well, let me back up a step. So I kind of figured that out because you guys just had had kids. Yes. So I have three children, mm -hmm. 11, six and four. And I kind of figured that number out by wanting to part of the goal is to see my great grandchildren. Wow. So I would need some help from my kids. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> right, and right. some help from my grandkids. <laughs> but I figured if they each had kids around 30 years old, yeah. then I might live just long enough to see my great grandkids. You're right on track, man. So that, that's the goal. <laughs> I, I tell you, honestly, when I saw you walking in here, I'm like, that's not Pete. <laughs> no way. This Thanks, is, bro. This, this Thanks is incredible, button, man. Thanks, it, it really is. So, um, go, Oh, go ahead. So the good, the good news for everybody, I, I wanted to say this because it's important. So that, that's the goal, right? 120. Um, and wow. we used to think that it was your genetics. Like, yeah. just look at your genes. You know, how long yep. did your mom and dad live and, and so forth and so on. And we used to think that, 80% of your health span, which is how long you're healthy for, mm -hmm. and your lifespan, how many years you live, was 80% dependent upon genetics, and only you could only control 20%. So all this new research that is out on anti-aging, basically in the last 25 years, but certainly in the last 10 years, uh, says the exact opposite. So the good news is that we can control it based on... Mm -hmm. A number of different factors, of course, but two, I'll give you two of the big ones, sleep and nutrition. 
So okay. the Snooze Podcast, welcome. Yes. <laughs> we've, we've been giving everyone the wrong advice. No, 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 no. Absolutely I, I not. Yeah, no, but sleep, sleep is obviously crucial. But there are some people that they take no snooze very literally. Mm, yeah. Whereas to us, it's a lifestyle, it's a mindset, it's about attacking right, things, right. not procrastinating. But a lot of people, when they hear no snooze, automatically they're like, what, no sleep? You promoting that? Yeah. So no, we're actually promoting yeah. sleep. And due to science, I, I love this, so keep going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, awesome. and, and yeah, I'm glad you guys clarified that because I think um, you know people that may have taken that literally, so to speak, or I guess in the wrong way, that, that's certainly not what you guys are advocating and not what the research is showing. So you can, you know, I know you're a real early riser and I think it's wonderful, right? You get a, you get a jump on everything like that. Um, but what you want to make sure of, of course, is that you're getting enough sleep. Mm. And we now know what enough sleep is so that you can get up at that hour or any hour that you choose to and optimize your performance, be at peak performance. And what, peak, is, peak, what is enough sleep? So the, the research, and um, this comes from um, one of the best researchers in sleep, is a guy by the name of Matthew Walker. Mm. And he just came out with a great book that I recommend to everybody called Why We Sleep. And I think if everyone were to take that book and read it, it actually makes you a little bit scared. So mm. you, the, the minimum is seven hours. Really? So in other words, in other okay. words, what happens is anything of? under seven, all the bad stuff happens. And anything from seven to eight, all the good stuff happens. Eight being really the optimal number. Even six, though? Bad stuff happens. It's really? Six. Yeah. It's over an extended period of time? Yeah. Now, uh, over an extended period of time, yes, but it, through his research, he's actually shown immense cognitive decline in as short as losing just one hour. Really? Yeah. So it makes the, sense. But yep. Yeah. So that I'm definitely not getting seven to eight. I get well, six to seven. You have extreme situation now, too, with the baby. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, yes, but. What's weird is I feel like at my optimal peak performance after six hours, like I get up at six hours strategically, even if I can sleep. Yeah. And now remember, first of all, everybody's different, right? So everybody is definitely different. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> different. Right. And if you're a hard charging, you know, you might have a little more adrenaline, et cetera, you know, be able to get you through the day and, and so forth and so on. But if you just went with that, just went with the research, I'd, I would say based on that information uh, that that Walker had researched, if you're great at six, man, you would be even greater at seven. And so I'm a, I'm a big, big advocate, you know, of, of what you guys are doing. And I mean, to not snooze on life. Right. I mean, that's really what it's all about. It's such a be with all the crap going on in the world. Yes. It's still such a beautiful world, beautiful people, et cetera, out there. You want to maximize, you know, you, your kids and your business and all this other stuff. Right. Your fitness and nutrition. So you get up at four thirty. Yeah, four thirty. So 30, I, I think it just comes down yeah. to to trying to figure out, and for for those that are listening, um, you know, if you're early risers like that, you just got to work backwards. In other words, if I'm going to get up at four thirty, I just count seven hours backwards, and I know that I have to adjust my lifestyle. Not in the morning, still get up at that yep. time, but I'm going to adjust my lifestyle at night and see what I could cut out, reduce, whatever, um, so that I'm making sure I'm getting up at four thirty, back it up. I got to get in bed by X, whatever the math is. You know, and make sure I'm getting my seven hours. That was the sleep doctor, right? The sleep, yeah, he, yeah. He also said, I think that if you sleep the right amount, memory, right? Isn't memory yes. the big decliner? So sleep, yes, it's one of the big decliners of because actually getting not enough sleep is probably not probably. He 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 would argue, and and I'm now in the same camp. Um, the worst possible thing that you could do for your health may be right up there as bad as smoking cigarettes. Like that's how bad it really? is. Because it's not just the brain. So the brain is certainly um, affected and is shown less sleep, dementia later on in life, and unfortunately dementia at an early age. And dementia and Alzheimer's on the rise. Oof. And they think they know why now. Part of it is sleep and part of it is eating a diet full of inflammatory foods like sugar, for example, yeah. right? So b b back back to the sleep for a second. So not enough sleep affects the brain, definitely, in negative ways, but also other systems, your reproductive system. And the big one today, of course, with COVID, it negatively affects your and suppresses your immune system. Immune system right? So if yeah. you want to have a rock-solid immune system, sleep. 
like, you know, people want to take vitamin C, antioxidants, vitamin D, and, you know, maybe all that stuff is good, but there's nothing better in the world for a powerful immune system that could fight off COVID or fight off, you know, a lot of, a lot of disease by getting enough sleep. Yeah. You know, that's where it starts. So that, that, that immune system is revved up. Wow. You know? Yeah, that saying sleep is the best thing for you, it actually is true this time. Usually when people say something and it's like a headline, it's never correct. That's right. like one of the this few is times exactly, that's actually... Exactly. Yeah, and I think it's finding a, a balance because... Like if you're, you're, your lifestyle and you're, if you're a go-getter, right? And if you have yep. a typical job that you got to be there at, you know, 9 a.m. And then you got a bunch of kids you got to take care of after. I think there is something to be said for yeah, try to get that seven hours. Clearly, if, if the science backs it, and I need to go read that book now, too. Because I've actually been avoiding seven hours. I'm embarrassed because there's been times that I wake up after seven hours and I keep track of it, right? And th- there's been those days that I'm like, what, what's different? What's different? Mm, mm-hmm. And I see that it's like, wow, I'm actually more tired. And the only thing that changed wasn't my diet, wasn't me working out. It was just that I actually slept an extra hour. But now I, now I got to go back well, and, me, and yeah. readjust. Re, yeah. Is it possible his body got readjusted to that and seven would be optimal, but his body's so used to it that if it gets anything I, else, that, it's a little That's actually groggy. a really good question. Honestly, I, I don't know the answer to it, okay. you know? Yep. Um, yeah, and I haven't heard, you know, the, the so-called experts, you know, speak yeah. on on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my guess at it would be that it still is psychological because, again, you're a hard driver. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. And a motivated person with, with energy to begin with. So it might just be yep. a psychological you know, factor. To- so, but, but also there's something to be said, too, because I'm actually in bed at 9 o'clock. Like my wife and I, even now with the baby, we get in bed at nine o'clock. Now, you know, falling asleep by nine, that's, that, yeah, that, yeah. You, you know, that, that's besides the point. But I'm, and, and I guess it's a pretty obvious point that we've spoke about before, but I wake up early and I go to bed early because my body is now exhausted from the day. So I'm actually in bed. For seven and a half. That's yeah. really good. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm just curious. So this is actually a part of it. So you get in bed at nine, but you're what, watching TV? Well, by the book? time we fall, so now, yeah, we, we, we're trying to develop a routine. We haven't yep. come to one that like, all right, this is it. Yep, yep. Um, we, we've listened to things. We've tried to read to the baby, throw on a show. So we're trying to figure it figure out. That you out. know, But yeah. we, we enjoy, genuinely enjoy getting in bed at nine o'clock. Yeah. Well, that's good because you're at least technically resting. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep, you know? exactly. And then, so I guess you know, if you're falling something. asleep by 10, so you're getting like about six and a half, yep. right? Is that about right? Yeah, yep. about six and a half, you know? So you're actually close. See, so you only need to work on 30 minutes. You and know what I mean? It's not like, not you know, it's and not I like could, two I could, hours. I could figure that out. I'm definitely yeah. going to do that. So part of that is um, how do you get more sleep, right? Or how do you improve the restfulness of your sleep? Because and quality sleep. And the talking, quality, right? Exactly. Quality, right? I'm talking about, yeah. So I'm talking about like actually staying asleep for seven hours getting into deep sleep and and REM and so part of that um, has to do with light and so for example nowadays of course you know almost everyone has a big LED TV green time yeah his screen time their laptop or just being in bed in the dark and staring at your cell phone yes so all of these devices emit blue light so if you just think uh, I'm gonna overgeneralize but to keep it simple um, if you just think of the spectrum of a rainbow, you know, so we need blue light, okay? And in the, the greatest amount of blue light that we get naturally is in the morning with the sun because what happens is blue light activates your circadian rhythm. Mm. So blue light will cause you to dump cortisol, which is the stress hormone, which we need in the morning to wake us up. So now if I'm in bed at nine o'clock yep. in the dark, I put the lights out, but I got my phone and I'm staring at it, right? That blue light could A, keep me up, so it takes me longer to fall asleep, or B, be disruptive during the night because it's actually raising my cortisol level and disrupting mm. my natural circadian rhythm. Are you so mindful of this? So mindful. Well, really? So there's ways around it, yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't uh, bring the glasses. Actually, I forgot them. That I'm, you know, <laughs> I I, I don't I'm know. glad you brought that up. So I brought them and I, I left them in the car, unfortunately. Um, so one of the ways is if you're, if habits, yep. right? I mean, get in the habit of not looking at your phone, but okay, you're in the habit of looking at your phone, you don't want to give that up. Um, there are what's called blue light blocking glasses. So at a minimum, 
put those glasses on, there's several companies that make them nowadays. You know, you can just go online. There's a bunch of companies that make them. My favorite is called True Dark. And you can get glasses, for example, that are 100% blue light blocking. So you can still see the screen. What does it look like when you have those they're glasses red. on? Oh, red. I was going to So gonna everything is red? Everything is red. They're yep. pretty, I mean, they're nice, but if they made a stylish version, it'd be all, <laughs> that's a yeah. very look. Actually, I was going to say, gotten, are you talking like goofy goggles? Gotten, well, they've gotten, gotten a little, little bit like, better. But yeah. they're more like um, sport looking right now. Yeah, right? They're, they've gotten a little bit like better. Like Iron Manny. Yeah. You would, if you had the aviators with it, <laughs> yes, I think you'd be yes, all over that. Yes, <laughs> And so then then there there is a Miami glasses look. for indoors, because see all these LED lights that we're under is emitting Terrible. this blue light. I was trying to tell so Claudio that before we started, but he just insisted, you know? Yeah, well, no, so if you're, no. We had to show off your skin that's <laughs> what we have. Yeah, no i would be wearing like if you're here. indoors all day people that work in office buildings yep. and such you wear there's 80 percent blockers so they're yellow lenses wow and they're blocking 80 percent of the blue light wow so you're still getting some of it because you want to be awake during and it's the only day. into your eyes not on you right only that's into your you, eyes okay. yeah exactly do you, do you exactly. think sometime in the future just everyone's gonna be wearing different colored glasses wow that's a great question or lenses can you uh, achieve that by wearing lens uh, contact lenses? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I'm they just don't curious. Have, they don't yeah, they don't have that yet, yeah. you know. There um, you go. but who knows? I mean, this stuff like I said is still relatively new. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. So they're probably still figuring out. Your your so that, knowledge is incredible. <laughs> we're just uh, getting, right? we're just so, getting <laughs> fired up. Right, right. <laughs> so that that's one of the things I'd say certainly to everybody cuz again, no whose lifestyle is about maximizing and peak optimizing performance. peak performance right and so if you're going to kill it during the day you want to get good sleep so that energy level is just non-stop and you're not having those hours yep. you know where and so blocking blue light at night could be one of the things that would help wow and improve the sleep the other thing is you got to keep your room cool mm. 65 degrees Hold is on. the optimal number. Yeah. Hey, babe. Make sure the yeah. wife's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My wife needs to hear this because she's yeah. always, always turning it up. So oh. I actually like to sleep with oh, cool. yes. Six, yep. very cool. 65. Wow. I don't know if my, cool. my baby might freeze. I was going to yeah. say that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we usually stay around 72. If it was up to me, we'd stay at like 70-ish or so lower. So 65, if I had to give you a range, I'd say then that that upper number would be 68. So if you had to go to six, 65 really? to 68. But now why when you wake up sometimes after AC? Oh, I love it. So you're like, nice. ah, <laughs> that's the next thing. You got to have a humidifier. Ah, because, you gotta buy dry, a because of dry air. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Because it's wow. dry. Because it's dry. So, you so you're put drying a, out the mucus. A dehumidifier. Dehumidifier. In sorry. Your, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Did you, I say humidifier. dehumidifier? I meant humidifier. Wait. My apology. You meant hum, hum, humid. You want to add Oh, you want to add. add it. My okay. fault. Yes. I okay. apologize. You want to no, add No, you humidity. said it right. I, I said okay. it Okay. Yeah. You're going to go to Dave's house and he's going to have a humidifier. I'm having all these contraptions. Well, we're gonna, we got to hack your yes. house i mean yes. essentially that's a that's what i've done hack your that's environment I, yeah so if you if you guys were to come over for dinner or something i'd love to cook for you guys we'll oh he's a great cook so, too Did i tell you uh, Pete invite us all. over <laughs> um i don't have any of these lights anymore in my house really and i well, just, just shifted candlelight. To, i just changed <laughs> well, all my lighting it, to LED. is it candlelight part of it but no but now they got <laughs> the, same company, no, the same company true dark actually <laughs> makes a a bulb that with a remote control you can switch from remember the incandescent bulbs the old school bulbs yeah those were actually listen energy wise you're supposed to save money and so forth but what they didn't tell us is that this is disrupting our health mm. those old wow. school incandescent bulbs that were more of that yellow light yep. you know that we grew up with yeah, Edison looking. They were much healthy. Exactly. Oh my god. So <laughs> much healthier. Funny story. When I moved in, one there was all LEDs in the house, but then outdoors I didn't really have oh, too yeah. much lighting. There was like a little bit of like some yellow lights that were outside the house. I got a neighbor shout out to Manny. I put LEDs on the outside of the house. The first day I turned him on, he came to my door and was like, whoever invented these should be shot. shot. It, looked, <laughs> it looked like a night game at Fenway. Yeah, no, you could yeah. see everything. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. All right. So I'm doing everything wrong in my life. <laughs> we got to hack. So we got to hack is, your house for I, I yeah. wonder, optimal health. I this is incredible. it translates to babies at all as That's far as That's a great question. Life. I don't know. Like... Uh, I, I know because the TVs are big, right? In the bedroom. Yeah. So while they're trying to sleep and we're watching TV, I wonder if we're, I mean, you're just put glasses on Livy. <laughs> I'm, I'm on. literally going to put like a screen yeah. over her. That's a great This is question. wild stuff. Now, not, not I mean, not, it's going to keep us here in terms of overall health and wellness. What was it in your life that like you were like, okay, now I'm now, now I'm a product of 
health and wellness? Was there something that um, happened? Were you always in love with it growing up? Like, how did that kind of okay, turn into like a yeah? Uh, so I mean, I've, lifestyle. For yeah, you. I've been an athlete if you want to count it going back that far you know playing youth sports i've been playing sports organized since i was eight years old and uh, that is my life and has been my life and i've always considered myself to be an athlete and always had that mentality and that's just you know kind of been my identity you know um and i think you alluded to it kind of in the intro so um i had been for a long time just training so there's two columns i look at it there's sports performance and then there's longevity and anti-aging. And the two really don't mix. Because typically, if you're in hot pursuit of a gold medal or a championship... Like break your body down. Yeah, yeah. and you're going to do at any cost to win. See, like I meant Mike, more Mike trying to side. chase me in the push-up thing, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be real. He was yeah. toast. And so, Damaged myself long term. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you making a thousand a day? No, no. I, I got to it. I got to a thousand a day. I did it twenty-seven days out of thirty, and then we had the baby. Wow! And okay. that was the last then, time uh, I yeah, made the I push. You. Blew yep. both. Yeah, I, I blew both shoulders. Yeah. Blew your elbows. elbows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, we'll go ahead. Here's and get a back peptide there. Sorry. for that. We'll talk about yeah. peptides. Sorry, we, we, we the peptides. peptides. Pete, we we have a so, problem. We take people off track. No, no, no. It's good. I'm more the longevity <laughs> guy. So yeah. So there's these two columns, right? There's peak performance, and then there's longevity. And I had lived in peak performance from. In, in essence, eight years old through, you know, because because I still compete. There's no competitions now, but I still compete in the sports of when they restart again. Yep. Uh, powerlifting, CrossFit, a new sport. It's high rocks. Which yeah. Is what, what is that? What is so high, high rocks? rocks I, is this yeah. really cool thing uh, that started out of Germany. And it's essentially I don't know if they'd be happy with me describing it this way, but it's CrossFit without the gymnastics. Wow. So it's more endurance based. There's no Olympic weightlifting, so you don't handle the barbell. Um, and there's no, you know, like kipping pull ups and handstands gotcha. and, and stuff yep. like that. So you, uh, the event uh, is like you run a kilometer, run one kilometer, and then maybe push a sled. Then you run another kilometer, do a thousand meters on the rower, that type mm. of stuff. Okay. You know? All yep. right. Yep, so I've done that. And uh, CrossFit, higher. Oh, and track and field. I love track and field and sprinting. Wow. You know, so. Uh, um, what's your 40? So uh, it's indoor 60. Indoor, for what's your, what's it's your 60? 60. So my 100 meter time is 15.1. Wow. I have no reference. 100 meter. 100 meter. So a little more than a football field. Than a football field. Well, yeah. or at least no, 100 was. meter. I've been trained. How does meters and yards. Three. Yeah, meters yards. a little more than a yard. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I'm surprised you left Three something off that Mike does, and he does it well walking. Well, oh, what yeah. Walking? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. How, what are the benefits of walking? Do you have any? Oh, yeah. Tremendous. <laughs> tre- <laughs> tre- <laughs> that's why this is my guy. Treme- <laughs> walking, tremendous. Uh, I actually, that's a habit. And I actually, so, so just, I'm going to tie walking into answering your question. Like, so you alluded to it in the introduction. When I hit 50, I was like, you know, I want to always continue to compete in sports. In fact, there is a thing called the Centenarian Olympics that I want to be in. Wow. Hundred year old Olympics. That is for you. <laughs> that's a awesome. That is, is another. Goal. That's your goal. Because then I can. That yeah. is walk the goal. Them to but death. so I want to compete. <laughs> I walk them yeah. To death. <laughs> yeah, walking. But so you want to compete in sports, but I also want to live a long time. So how do I bridge the gap between performance and just give up sports. longevity? Yeah, yeah give up. Good. Well, you live a lot. A lot. You'll live a lot longer. Well, perfect. Because you know? I'm so. retired from a lot of sports, <laughs> dude. I'm still working this toe injury from yeah. softball, like. Over a year now. Peptides. Can yeah. you fix my toe? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could try. Yeah? Yeah, what yeah. What peptide? Oh, I know we're jumping all over the place, That's but right. I, I feel like we're jumping through our skin. We have so many questions. <laughs> what peptide would be good for a toe? So there's, there's d- different categories. What is a peptide? Okay, so, all right. So peptides have actually been around for a long time, at least since the 1950s, all right? Um, and probably before then, um, I think they were first discovered in Russia, um, Were or, they naturally or Soviet occurring? Union. Yes, so they are naturally occurring, and that's why Beer. they're safe. So we actually have, uh, that we know of, 7,000 or more peptides in our body. Hmm. So, for example, just think of the gastric juices, right? In digestion, there's peptides in there. I have Crohn's disease. Okay, so, yep. So, yeah. so you're gluten-free. I'm not, <laughs> but but I, I have to monitor. Yeah, but you're um, watching. You, you know, yeah, and, I, and thank God, knock on wood, I've been Nuts in remission for about ten years thank now. Yeah. Um, but I'm also on Remicade, so uh-huh. if if there's a peptide that you think there that is. I can, yeah, there take, is. There is that will take me away from 
actual medication like that? Yeah, wow. it's treatable without pharmaceutical medication today. Yep, so it would be going to an integrative medicine guy who's actually here in White Plains. Good guy, friend of saved mine. Saved my life. Beautiful. Yep. Dr. Angelo Bocciarelli, if I can give oh, him a shout out. What a name, wow. yep. too. And, but, right, exactly. Bocciarelli? <laughs> Bocciarelli. like my Angelo. alter ego. Angelo. Dr. Wow. Angelo Bocciarelli, or Bach, as we call him for short, uh, is right here in White Plains at Westchester Wellness Medicine. Oh, is that the guy I met? Oh, Angela, yeah, you met yeah, Bob. I met him. Great yeah, guy. Met, we're going to do the, the business guy. together. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so this doesn't take the place of your primary care physician. You keep gotcha. your primary yep. care. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to go to Bach if you're sick. But what he does is takes your blood labs. And I'm not talking about the two sheets of paper that you get when you go for your annual physical. I'm right. talking this is a deep, massive deep dive into your blood biology. 10 pages long looking at your immunity are you allergic to anything your vitamins I'm 10 page Dave so it works di- it's, it's like <laughs> diabetes it's cholesterol inflammation I mean amazing stuff wow. right so you know we are sitting here we feel healthy good energy sleep good you know but you really know how healthy you are when you get your blood drawn yes. I always say that's like an x-ray mm. you know what I mean that's going to tell good internal, or bad internal everything it's telling everything yep. yep so there is a peptide that you can take orally it's one of the few that actually work orally uh, that could help with Crohn's and Dr. Bach obviously would go a lot deeper than I'm able to uh, on this but it's called B P C 157 and B P C stands for body protection complex wow and it was actually BPC discovered 157 yep it was actually dis- watch if we yeah need. it was actually discovered in our bodies it is a, a healing peptide and where do you purchase peptides well that's a great question orgain might have them right Who? orgain do you know orgain I know the name, but I'm not. Yeah, so we, we just have we, we have a um, actually shout out to orgain. Um, they, it's a supplement line. Okay, they have um, all organic plant based oh, proteins. Wow. Oh, I'd like to check them out. Yeah, well, we got a good code for you. No snooze thirty thirty cool. percent off your first order. Cool. And I've been doing my right? collagen peptides through through Oregon. them. Yeah. Oh wow, I'll check it out. Yeah. Wow, They're this could links. be time. Yeah. How about that? This, this yeah, is, we just didn't add it without even trying. Wow, right? that sounds, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will good. definitely check that yeah. out. You're and it's primarily organic. plant-based yeah. at the moment. I'm so. eight because I'm not competing in any sport, so it fluctuates. So I'm not competing. I'm not preparing for any event right now. Yep. So when I'm not preparing for an event, I'm 80% plant-based, meaning that my total calories per day, 80% of my total calories or, or more is coming from plants. And when I was uh, working with him previously, what was your breakdown of, it was like the opposite, right? Not quite, but it's more 50-50. So yeah. I'm eating way more animal protein when I'm preparing for an event. And the reason for that is there's a pathway in our bodies that's not good for longevity. It's called the mTOR pathway. And uh, again, I'll, that, that's the fancy name. Simply what that means is it's a growth pathway. So if you're competing in sports, you don't want to run faster, jump higher, lift more weights. You know, think of, uh, think of the old, you know, an old carburetor on a car. You want that mTOR pathway to be wide open. You want it to be flying because I need to get stronger. I need to get faster. I need to have better reaction skills. But that's not good for longevity. If you want oh. to live a long time, as adults, we need to dampen that mTOR. Animal protein opens it and activates it. So large amounts of animal uh-huh. protein on a consistent basis will keep mTOR activated, which is not good for longevity. So uh-huh. when I'm competing in sports, I change my diet or when I'm preparing for an event, yeah. you know, I'll give myself, depends on the event or so forth, but anywhere between eight and 16 weeks, I'll up my animal protein. But right now, with everything going on still, you know, there's no events. So I've significantly reduced my, my meat consumption. And do you feel benefits immediately when you switch over to, to diets like that? Well, depends on what you mean by benefits. Because I'll explain, like, for example, today, I went to the gym fasted, you know, this morning. And uh, there's definitely a performance decrease. When, when, when you're I'm eating the way I am now. Okay. There okay. is undoubtedly a performance decrease, meaning I don't have the same strength, I don't have the same endurance, you know, that that what an athlete would be looking for. I can't go as hard as long in training. So there's a fall off. And, you know, it's that's why it's a trade-off. But you got to listen to your body. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just looking at it exactly, you know. So I'm kind of leaning in the the direction of that longevity column at the moment. And then if something comes up and things open up and I can do an event, I'll, you know, go back. But I want to find the goal is to find something in the middle, you Mm -hmm. know, because I'm I'm an amateur athlete at the end of the day either. I'm not like making money at it, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want to stay in sports performance, you know, where I'm kind of pedal to the metal all the time now right. anyway. 
You know, at the same time, I like being strong, part of the mentality, right? Because physically strong, mentally strong, mm -hmm. spiritually strong, right? All fits into the no snooze concept. You know what I'm saying? You want to yep. be strong and powerful in many ways. So, but if you're concentrating fully on longevity and you're trying to get your BMI, your body mass index down to 25, you're just not going to be that strong, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yep. you're yep. giving something up. You know, but I, I think there's got to be something in the middle, and I'm trying to find where that middle ground is. Are there any food items that are uncommon that you've incorporated in your diet where you're like, this is a, a superfood, a game changer that a lot of oh, people wouldn't great, know about? Because you oh, always hit wow. me with like. Yeah, that a lot of people would gems. not know about. Well, not even not know about or not utilize as much as they should, or yeah, there's a okay. misconception. Sure, sure. So um, I think this is a little bit more in the longevity column, Love what, it. I'm, what I'm about to say. Um, and you and I were actually talking about this the other day when, when you know, we went to look at a, at a house, um, is beans. Yes. Legumes. So there are seven different areas around the world that were studied in, um, they're called blue zones. Now, they're called blue zones because they had the largest concentration of centenarians, people that live to 100 plus. So the wow. researchers are like, you know, why are these people in these areas, Sardinia and Italy being one of them? That's where I'm going. Why are you? Yeah. No, no. I'm oh, just, that's where you're going to go live forever in Sardinia. <laughs> and if gotta, I went there, I'd be dead by 50. If, only if you learn Italian. You, all the I heard time. you were trying to learn Italian. I am. I'm still working. Yeah. I have a lot right. of to-dos on the list. Still working on it. <laughs> See. Prego. <laughs> so these, these blue zones were then researched by some PhDs and so forth. You know, why do, why do these people live to 100 and in other areas, you know, we're dying at 65 of cancer and getting dementia at 60 and all that, you know what I mean? And so there were some common denominators. Anyway, one of them was consumption of beans, legumes. So I, and this is, this is what fits into the terminology also that's being thrown around today a lot in longevity anti-aging is ancestral living. You know, it's looking back, paleo diet, ancestral living. You know, how did our ancestors do it? But when they didn't live that long. But they didn't so live that long right? for other reasons. Well, they didn't yeah. have the resources either. They didn't have the resources. Yeah. The always, medicine wasn't as yeah, good. People say that. I'm like, the average age was like 30. Like, yeah. When we well, paleo, was, right? Well, like, yeah. I mean, but it was because they were getting eaten my, by. I had my, my grandfather lived to uh, 93, my grandmother 93. Uh, so, that's a good point. You know, yeah. So and it depends on. The area. Yeah, Depends I didn't want to their... offend any uh, people out no, there no, that live to 150. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say definitely to answer your question, um, like can getting beans, back fresh to beans? yeah. So uh, another Mike's like, wait, can I just pop open a can of? No, I'm and, curious. And, and that's actually a great it? question. And the answer yes. is yes, you can. Yes. And I was concerned about that also because like one of the things. It's amazing. This is great. Exactly, yeah. ninety-nine cents to be exact, wow. and organic, by the way, really? organic. Yes. So nutritionfacts.org. A uh, hey, guy right, by the name of Michael Greger, Dr. Greger. Um, so you could just go to that website, type in, you know, black beans, kidney beans, whatever, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, I you know, the, the Italians, you know, and you will get Chiro now Bajos. all 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 Greger does is he basically re he reads the research for us and then puts it into a nice video clip podcast. Oh, I love and he's it. just regurgitating the research. Wow. So it's not his opinion. Spark he's notes. not selling anything. Spark you know what note. I mean? I love it. He's just regurgitating all the research. Anyway, all the research on beans and legumes, eat all you want. Really? It's a slow burning, low glycemic carbohydrate. Right. So one of the major problems, right, and today is sad. SAD standard American diet, right? We're eating cereal. I think I just saw this and I thought it was a joke, but it wasn't. And I think it was on Twitter. It was an advertisement. And Eggo, I think Kellogg's. So Kellogg's yeah. waffles. They just came out with three new flavors. And like one of the three flavors, well, two of them I remember. One is like almost like a neon blue. And the other one was like this neon pink. And it was, and I'm saying that like, you're feeding that to kids? Like, imagine giving that to your kids. Right, yeah, it's no. poison. And I now, mean, do you think that's just like dye and stuff added to it? Obviously? Dye yeah. and sugar. Right. Dye and sugar, you know? And so, sugar, well, you talk about sugar. Sugar is it's a killer. I mean, sugar leads to diabetes, diabetes to heart disease, dementia. There's nothing good about added sugar. You know, so you're giving kids Eggo waffles? Yep. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so beans, so that that would be high on the glycemic index. Like you're eating those those Eggo waffles, and you're you're dumping sugar into your bloodstream. Then the body has to dump insulin. Then the insulin crashes. It's a train wreck. Mm. But beans is like low, slow, and steady. You're mm. gonna get sustained energy. You're gonna get over you know the course of hours. Yep. You're gonna get tremendous dietary fiber, which is great for your gut, for the microbiome mm. of your of your intestine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and at the end of the day, you're going to feel full longer, mm. right? Because of all the fiber. And so there's protein in and beans there's, too, And right? there's yeah. protein in it. Yep. Is there a best bean that you uh, see? Yes, that's actually interesting. You asked that question. And the winner, the winners were black beans and chickpeas. Ooh, wow. Now, that doesn't mean things like a pinto bean was at kind of at the at the bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that it's bad for you. It just had a little bit less nutrition. It's just than, not the optimal. Yeah, it yeah, just had a little less nutrition. And then you're talking about the can. So I was like, oh, man, because you want to optimize, right, during yep. the day. So I'm like, I love to cook, but I'm also trying to develop this style that, like, you could cook quick, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because like kind of, yeah, almost like a little Rachel Ray-ish type, you know, 20 yep. minutes, boom, boom, you know Love what I mean? Love that show growing up. Yeah, right? It's Remember, Remember that? Was you know? it 20 minute meals? 20 minute meals, right, exactly. It's my girl, Rachel. Because, so, <laughs> you know, oftentimes if you, if you get the, you know, the sprouted bean, which is even better, but it's 45 minutes soak time, then another 45 minutes cooking, and I'm yeah, like, so that's, that's an hour and a half, man, I'm trying to, I got, yep. got to move, you know what I mean? So thank God at nutritionfacts.org and Dr. Greger said, yeah, you could have the beans right out of the can. So basically all you're doing is there's a little nutrition loss, but it's not significant enough where he was like, no, you can't have those. Wow. You know? So now you're talking about opening up a can of beans, right? In a BPA aluminum free can, of course. Right? Because you don't want the standard or no? Yeah. Now it is. Pretty much now it is. Um, And all you're doing is heating them up. And adding spices. So beans is one, and spices would be the, the second thing. Can you so, eat them cold, like right out of the can? I feel I. You can put them on a salad. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I was doing a three bean a three bean salad as a there meal you go, prep. and so cold. Yep. So there you go. Yeah, and I was chopping up some onions, a little celery, some uh, yep. cucumbers in there, just keeping it, you know, just to give me some extra extra flavor. That's that's fantastic. Wow. But honestly, I, I got sick <laughs> sick of, of it. Like I've just you got eating tired you gotta of mix it. Well, variety again, like like we said before off camera, very extreme. So I went out and bought ninety seven cans of beans yeah, which yep. i'll probably do ate now this, ate, <laughs> ate this for three to five weeks straight yeah they got sick of it oh man yeah but yeah, now i'm like ready a to snack go again. or meals no that was my meals no, so like, I, so i've messed around with different recipes so that doesn't happen because i'm kind of the yep, same way yep. so one of the things i did was i make it a little bit thicker so i, I don't put as much bone broth you mm. know as the stock in Ooh. it so it's a little bit you know hardier and uh i found a uh grain free so gluten free, mm-hmm. made out of cassava. Do you know what cassava is? It's a root no. vegetable like sweet potatoes. Okay. 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 So it's made out of cassava, taco. Wow. So I put the I dump the beans in these tacos. The name of the company is Siete. S oh, I yeah. you know they have Siete? Chips and yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. S I E T E. Yep. Yep. And their chips are good. They have chips. They have tortillas. Yeah. They have everything. Yeah. Now they're not. It's not organic, but they're the expensive. ingredients. Yeah. Well. Yeah, a little bit more. Longevity in my wallet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're good. Wow. Yeah, but they're, they're really good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And so tacos I'm and then away. and then I change up the spices, you know. So I make I think I was going to bring you one the other day. Yeah, the yeah I I use uh, yeah, escarole and beans. Yep, one of the Ooh. old ancestral, you know, that's what yes. our grandparents used to yeah, eat. Oh, my God, like my a, grandmother makes it phenomenal. Right? Escarole and beans. Right, and and what that is was simply an ancestral, it was like a peasant dish because yep, they didn't have exactly. a lot of money. They yep. didn't have, you know, they couldn't buy meat. Yep. You know, like we do go to the supermarket and get meat. So that was, that was a standby, you know? And so I was making it the other day with my mother. She's my mother's eighty six, and uh, she's, ah, you that's that you can't make it that way because I'm making it like modern, you know. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, that's not how you do are, it. Are you slipping peptides in mom's in diet? Mom's, or what is yeah. going on? mom's uh, 182. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. I, I'm I've got her on a few different things like resveratrol. Um, you know, that's that's a little. I bit am different. literally going to play this episode back, Pete, <laughs> and I'm going to write down the words that I don't know, and I am <laughs> googling all. Of Google this, all this because I need all of this now, and I'll and I'll give you the the books too. So another I mentioned to you David Sinclair, yes. So another book I just mentioned resveratrol. So I'll just tell you quick on resveratrol. So resveratrol is the compound that is found in the skin of red grapes. 
Okay, which is why wine in small amounts is very good for us. A bottle. Yeah, a bottle, yeah. yeah. One glass. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the bad glass. news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, un- yeah. yeah, unfortunately, that's the bad news. It's like six ounces, you know what I mean? But that's kind of like one glass a night. It's one glass. Yeah, yeah it's I, one glass. I, I'd like to incorporate one glass a yeah. night. Yeah, and it's, mm-hmm. uh, that's actually good for you for a couple of reasons. One, you get a little bit of resveratrol. Unfortunately, you can't get enough. That's why you have to supplement because in order to get enough resveratrol to affect your longevity genes in a positive way, you ready for this? Yeah. And I don't recommend it. You would have to drink 600 glasses of wine. Oh, wow. So you can't do that, right? Wait, in one night? could. Uh, they didn't say. I think oh, it was because okay. it got yeah, to yeah, such yeah. a joke number, like 600, yeah, that absurd. it was just like Two they didn't even bother. Wow, yeah. That, that, yeah. You know? So you can't. So you supplement with resveratrol, and you can buy resveratrol on Amazon. Wow. You know, and, um, and so within David Sinclair's research, he's a geneticist at Harvard, so geneticist studying in no credentials. Stu- this guy. Yeah. No. PhD, not an MD is a PhD geneticist studying aging. And so he was working on this compound resveratrol, which he discovered will add to both our health span and our lifespan by working on. They discovered about 25 years ago. They, I'm saying the researchers, yep, the PhDs, gotcha, you know, gotcha. the people who were studying this stuff. Walter Longo is another one out of uh, USC. Um, that resveratrol works on these longevity genes that are called SIR, like S-I-R, like yes, sir, sirtuins. And we all have seven of these genes that help to regulate our epigenetic, our env- epigeome, our, our environment. And we can kind of turn them on and turn them off with resveratrol. So what resveratrol does is it mimics fasting. Mm. So even after you've eaten, it still is gives the stressor to the body as if you are fasting and helps to regulate blood sugar, mm, wow. blood glucose. Now, I love the way you break this down, but to a lot of people, like even myself, right? You, you think you know things and then you get somebody like Coach Pete here that it, clearly, I mean, this is incredible. But people must read these names yep. and you almost get like, you know, embarrassed to even try to even read it sometimes because it sounds so crazy. But then when you break it down and you're able to, to give like tangible takeaways as to why it helps. Yeah. This, this is incredible stuff, man. Yeah. Rhonda, Rhonda, Patrick. Rhonda Patrick. She's another one. Yeah. So what I tried, right. Mm -hmm. I watched her podcast with Joe Rogan. And she was mentioning broccoli sprouts, Mm. right? Because it has, what does it have in it? Oh, God. Uh, Uh, I can't pronounce it. Um, uh, I know there's a compound. No, this is good. Everyone's going to be. uh, I shouldn't, I should be able to. People who know it are going to be screaming on the other side of the screen. But it's basically a longevity benefit. Yes. And it's just broccoli sprouts. Yes. And apparently if you freeze them, it's like it, it goes times up. by it, 10, it, right? It, yep. So I, I bought broccoli sprouts. I grew them in the kitchen. Sulfurophane. You yes. grew them Sulfurophane. in the kitchen. Yeah, you put them in a jar. You soak yep. them. Yep. And then they just grow, right? And really? then they just grow. Wow. So I soaked them in a like a little whatever jar. They grew great. I tried to freeze them. Tasted terrible. Terrible. How so, many can you grow in your kitchen? Did you spice them? You got to spice them. Little. I didn't do anything to them. I just tried, oh, to, I, I tried to do a lemon juice shot with them. Yeah, yeah. Right? I was like, terrible. <laughs> terrible. But I froze them. So, I, you know, you throw that on salad. You do. I, I like the, the, um, the extreme things that you can find. Like, that's an extreme one. Apparently, yeah. the benefits are outrageous. outrageous it's yep. just a matter of how do you get in your system. Right. Do you do it naturally? Do you supplement? You know, so that was one that I wanted to ask you about. Like, do you have you ever played with that? Not, I mean, I eat a lot of broccoli. Yeah, you know, but not like you have with the with the broccoli sprouts themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And growing your own, right. well, yeah, like my, sprouted but, bread, it's the same concept, right? Yeah, because when exactly. it's growing, that's when the highest benefit yep. or nutrition, yep. is. the highest concentration. Concentration. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So now, if I if I can shift us a little bit, because I, listen, I could do a whole episode and season on this stuff <laughs> I, and, I, and I need to talk to you further about yeah, a lot man. of things that I'm not doing the yeah. right way yeah has there been a challenge or adversity that you've been able wow. to like you know overcome in your life so no snooze right we like to highlight like you know how you got to where you're at with like all this all this knowledge obviously it's a lot of research and stuff but was there a point in your life Hell yeah that you can remember that was like, okay, you know what? This now developed my why yep. as to, you know, why I want to just peak performance yeah. every day of my life. Yeah, yeah. That's an amazing question. And the answer is absolutely yes. And I actually have a different mindset on that now because uh, when first I had some obstacles that happened, they wrecked me. 
So I'll, I'll explain. So um, there's a great book. Or I'll, I'll mention another book that kind of changed a lot of my thinking on this. Um, and it's called Ob- The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Great book. You read it. So you know what I'm talking great about. Great book. Yep. And it literally is kind of answering the question that you just asked. Obstacles were not put in our way to block us or impede our our uh, pursuit of peak performance, yep. but they were put there to teach us something. Yes. And so I've had a couple events in my life. Um, one would be in 2009, simultaneously, I was on top of the world. I had three gyms. I had um, three physical therapy centers. Occupational therapy was rocking, making the most amount of money that I've ever had. And working my butt off, such to the point that, such to the point that looking back now, and you know, you you want to learn from these things. Like mm-hmm. you know, that obstacle was there; it was a detriment. And but what can I learn from it? You know, and so I was neglecting my marriage. Now, I wasn't aware of this because I had hedgehog vision. You know what I mean? I was going 150 miles an hour, but. It came to reality when I got divorce papers. Mm. So I had that in November 2009. Then March of that year, or sorry, March of the following year, 2010. So I, now I got simultaneous. I go through a business divorce with my business partner of these three gyms and physical therapy centers. Wow. So it's a train wreck for 2010. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and the financial fallout and mm-hmm. you know so forth and so on. And at that time, reflecting back now... You know, I wasn't able to handle it, you know. Now, I didn't, thank God, I didn't fall to any, you know, bad stuff, you know. I just didn't work. I went into my garden. I had the greatest garden in the world. That <laughs> I had a massive hundred tomato plants. You know, that's what I went to, you know yeah. what I mean? But so a lot of uh, that would be one, you know, obstacle. That's a great one, yeah. Yeah, that would be one obstacle. And one I, I can relate to, and I, I spoke about this on the podcast too, but, you know, my wife and I have only been married. Uh, we got married when I was 24, so six going on seven years and i was already seeing that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it was me yep like it was so me and she's telling me this and i'm not listening mm. and then the conversation started happening thank god we sought out therapy um and, and we've been able to really get back on track yeah. obviously baby in the picture now but i can see that- how a lot of people you you get twisted like yeah you know what working is everything and and really at yes. the end of the and day I, you have to take care of and home. i thought i was doing the right thing exactly. right because i was yep. blind because she was telling me hello you know i'm here and i was like well you know i got it i got to get this business i got to grow it i got to open another place mm-hmm. three's not enough i wanted 10 of these wow so i was in hot pursuit of 10 you know what i'm saying but in the meantime i was like i, I obviously didn't say it but looking back at my behavior you know was such that i thought that I was putting her first, mm-hmm. but I wasn't. I was really putting the business first. You know what I mean? And so it, there was no balance. Yeah. You know? And so now I got great balance. You know? Now, having that. learned from that experience and reflecting on it and going through it, man, I'm in the best relationship of my, of my life because now I'm really making sure that I put my partner's needs first, not the business not mine so now i have a different mindset you know now i'm like you come into a relation to you come into a relationship marriage whatever to give not to receive not to take no reciprocity none there was a quote i saw um at a house i was showing that hit me pretty hard so i work weekends and a lot of times a very difficult to schedule things with because i'm i kind of prioritize work so i looked up and it said don't be too busy trying to make a life mm. to live your life. Yep. Something mm. like that. Yep. yep. And then it kind of like it hit where I'm like, yeah, you know, I have to balance a little better where I prioritize my scheduling of personal things and then put work with around that. Yep. You know, prioritize Absolutely. family events, which I've done a good job at, but I definitely could do a lot better. Yep. But that's, I mean, to your yep. point. Yeah. That's, you gotta, yeah. It's flipping the priority. Yeah. And, and it's... Yeah. A habit, right? We were yes. talking about habits. Yep. You guys are talking about habits on another podcast, you yep. know, of yours not that long ago. And it is it is the development of better habits. Yep. And sometimes you can make massive sweeping change and like change it overnight. I believe people can do that, you know, if they if they want to and they choose mm-hmm. to, you can make massive change overnight. And other times it 
takes a little learning yeah. curve, you know, and a little learning process. But, and my argument is if someone makes a massive change overnight, there was however many lessons they learned along Beforehand. the way, they just didn't implement them, right? right? No like, doubt. Yep. I've seen that even with me with certain things. Like, I've learned a ton, and then there's certain days or whatever, it all just kind of clicks, mm. and then you move forward, you know, personal, professional, you know, everything. Yep. So it's interesting. No, no doubt. No there's doubt. no overnight wow. success. And thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah, man, man. That's, yeah. that's incredible stuff. Yeah. And I know everybody doesn't really like to talk about it, but when, yeah. honestly, you, you're living a peak performance life, it's clear that you can even talk about the uncomfortable stuff. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. And the uncomfortable stuff, I believe, so what does not kill us makes us stronger. Stronger, right. Right? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I think having developed that, that better mentality. Now, the other thing that I was able to do, actually, though, um, and this maybe didn't, didn't, didn't come from, um, you know, necessarily an obstacle, but I guess what I've learned is the coach needs to be coached. So I spend every day learning as much as I possibly can. Certainly don't know everything, don't pretend to, want to learn more. And so I actually from time to time, not, not you know, 365 um, and sometimes not all at the same time, but I have three different coaches mm. that I use. So I have a business mastery coach. I, I use Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. I love Tony Robbins. Incredible. And I, lo I, and I signed up for his coaching. So I, I use that. I myself from time to time use a nutritionist. Mm. Because she's always got valuable insights, you know. Is that Rhonda Patrick? Back, no, I wish she's a beast. I wish she's a beast. She's yeah. good. She, yeah, a little hard to understand sometimes. She gets a little clinical, she's but she's way. She's like, yeah, yeah. She says terms. I'm like, yeah, is that English? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, and then uh, I use a a sports performance coach from time to time myself. You know, so you know, talk about humility and you know and being humble. And there's always stuff to learn, and you can always learn from someone else. You know, always learn from someone else. You got to keep the mind open. What, do you have? Uh, do you plan on adding a longevity coach? Uh, wow, that's a great question. Um, I haven't thought about that. Um, like, because is there? Is it a? Does it, that are exist? You blazing. I was saying. Are you? You're blazing probably a new yeah. Account? There's. I guess there's one that I can think of. Uh, maybe you guys know the name. Pretty popular guy, Ben Greenfield. Yeah. Yeah, the you name, know, yeah. He's I mean, got yeah. no Wi-Fi in his house. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty ancestral living. Yeah, wow. he's ripped you know? up. Yep. Yep. Big dude, too yep. tall. And he's got a good podcast. He's got kids. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hmm, I so, so yeah, so I think as far as I know, and there may be more, don't get me wrong. I, I just, as far as I know, I think he might be. But I th is he older? No, he's like, he, I think he's not even 35 That's a good yet. point, too. You yeah. don't have to be, you don't have to have someone older to coach you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm baffled over here. But I read something really awesome on your on your website. And it was from your partner, Jill, is her mm -hmm, name, right? Mm -hmm, Jill, right? So, yep. So shout out to Jill, but I actually, uh, I'll read it. And it says, I approached Pete to be my strength coach because I had no idea of what to do in the gym unless it resembled a soccer conditioning workout. Since then, I've built more strength than I could have ever imagined and more confidence. If I can go from zero confidence, zero pull-ups, and only enough strength to hold a pint of ice cream in one hand, <laughs> to bench pressing more than my body weight in a few years, then you can too. So my question to you is, where do you start with somebody who has zero confidence? And in your opinion, over the course of the past 30 years in your work, what is the, I guess, the common theme that you see in confidence and then in fitness and when the two align what happens so you allured to it earlier you mentioned having to discover your why mm -hmm. and that's where I start so in in Jill's case it was simple questions and I kind of go deep with it and repetitive with it and I'll explain what I mean so she wanted to be stronger and that was like one of her top goals. Why do you want to be stronger? And then the answer that people first give, whatever that first answer is, is never the real deep why. Mm. It's way, you know, down. It's way yes. deeper than that. Yep. So why do you want to be stronger? You know, and then, oh, because I want to be a CrossFit athlete. Well, why do you want to be a CrossFit athlete? You see what I'm saying? So you just tear and the layers off. Yeah. One tear by the one. layers off. Yeah, because there's something way down there. You know, it's like I, we could do it with you with wanting to, you know, to lose weight and get in shape. It's more than just, um, oh, I think I want to look good for, you know, 
because we're going to Italy. You know, yeah, yeah. It, there, there's yeah. a bigger, deeper reason there. And so my point is it's psychological. Mm-hmm. And unless you uncover that that deep, deep why, it's never strong enough. If you're just using that superficial, that first answer, mm-hmm. it's not a strong enough why to get to the end result. For most people. Right. For some people it is. But I'm saying generally speaking, you got to really spend some time thinking about that, you know, um, and uncovering what's the purpose. So you discover the why yep. for the person who doesn't have any confidence. Yep. And then from there, I'm trying to like kind yep. of create yeah, like, a, like a process. Yeah, right? yeah. Yep. 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 So from there, obviously you get to, you get to know the individual. Do you take maybe their interests and things into account? Like what's the next step after you uncover that, that person has no confidence, right? Then you put them on, on a plan with coach Pete. Now they come to love fitness. Why is it that then they develop all this confidence? What is it over 30 years that you've been able to see that like, okay, that, that's yeah, it. so then it's mindset, meaning, and specifically, I'll, I'll be more specific with that, empowering beliefs. So words are important, right? And so if someone is accustomed to saying, uh, well, just to use weight loss again as a generic yep. e- example, I've tried every diet, nothing works. Mm, yep. If you're starting out with that language, you're already set up for failure. So we got to change that language yep. and find better words to use. You know, so that you people are starting to empower themselves and gain that confidence rather than thinking of themselves in a negative fashion. So it's not necessarily positive thinking, yep. um, but it certainly is kind of headed in the direction of thinking more positively, right. you know, and developing these empowering beliefs about yourself. Then, so you've got that piece and then it's habits. What can we do today to start that process. And it doesn't have to be a massive sweeping change. Another good book, Atomic Habits. Mm. Oh man, I'm James Clear. Uh, Man, I'm forgetting the name of the book, Uh, the author, excuse me. But the book is Atomic Habits. I read it, I forget the author Have you read it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so think of an atomic atom, right? An atomic bomb, the atomic atom, you can't even see it, right? With the eye, you need a microscope. I'm not a physicist, obviously, but you know, it's very tiny, right? But that thing creates a pretty massive explosion, right? Yeah. So. You start with an atomic habit, a tiny little change in your habit today that will we can stack on and stack little wins on, little wins mm. on every day. So it might be it might be going to bed 15 minutes earlier. You know, you say I can't yeah. get to bed an hour Preach. earlier. I'm, I'm loving this, right? You know, I'm loving. Can you this. give us an example of like an atomic habit that Jilly took or someone you've used took that like was your first thing that you instilled in them? Just for like a, um, a reference? Yeah, yeah. So let's see. In in Jilly's case, um, she really wanted to be a high level competitive CrossFit athlete. Mm-hmm. Okay, which she she is now. Which she's yeah, yeah which yeah. she's doing and still pursuing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but she had the th- limiting belief that I'm a, I have a soccer background. Mm. Can I really? I see these girls that are in the CrossFit games, and they're really strong. I have a soccer background i don't think i could ever be that strong Mm. well yeah you can it's just empowering belief let's change that habit and take a different action right yeah exactly and the atomic habit there was just start training a little bit differently so instead of doing this exercise today which is more of an endurance base so so uh, i'll add one other thing you always got to look for the weakness you don't want to i don't want to work with somebody whether I'm verbally coaching you or you know in the gym coaching you on what you're good at already, you mm. know what I mean? I gotta find what the weak link in the chain is. Identify the weakness mm. and bring the weakness up so that it becomes a strength. So in her case, it was strength. Mm. She could run miles from the soccer background. She could do all kinds of endurance activity, but she couldn't pick up a 135 pound barbell. Mm. So the endurance is diminished and the strength comes up. And you do that just one exercise, just just pick one. It doesn't have to be you know a, a whole massive yep. workout where you're banging all of a sudden trying to bang these different heavy weights. It's one exercise, one rep. Was and there it, an exercise that you did with her? Deadlift. Deadlift. Yeah, deadlift. Deadlift. Because wow. it's the like the mother of strength, yeah, so right. to speak. And that know? that builds the confidence as yes, well, right? Because you're I breaking. I can do this. Mm. Yeah. And that, then you start to stack that. And then you start and then to stack one that. by one. Now you create a whole routine and a plan. I, I uh, had a speaking engagement today, right? 
It still haven't changed from shout out for the from, invite. Thank from you. work. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it was, <laughs> couldn't be in the t- <laughs> It was invite only. Sorry, you know, I, I was just a guest as, <laughs> as the speaker. But it was about habits too, and I've come to the conclusion that I refuse in the morning to go work for anybody else in my life before I work for myself. Mm-hmm. Right, and I don't have like you have you have different flexibility than I do in my career. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I am going through my morning checklist, my gratitude prayer, my hydration, my active approach in terms of physically working out, my 10 pages that I read, if I don't do that, I have no confidence for the day to then go work for anybody else. Right? And of course, again, there's days that you can't get through your routine. Callie, my daughter, might stay up and not go back to sleep. So now my whole routine is shot, but I know I'm still confident that, you know what, I already, I've done this a million times. So one day is not gonna, gonna, not gonna throw me off, yeah. right? Yeah. And as I was saying that, I was seeing people's, and my boss was in the room, and I said, I will never come to work for you until I work for myself. And then when I explained it, yeah, he was then they were like, yeah, 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 he almost got offended. <laughs> but, but then I explained it, and you saw like people's, yep. like, you know, their, their mind kind of shifted and not that I'm selfish. I, I don't like no, to see it to as a self, it. but I know I'm going to show up better for you as the best version of yourself. Yes. That's what it is. In order for you to show up as the best version of yourself for this place, for your boss, you have to first take care of you. Right. Absolutely. Well, think I mean, about a marriage, plane, right? relationships, me, Mike and I, you know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when a planes, when they say for safety in the oh, plane, right. You have to take Great care point. of yourself before you can help someone else. That's right. So that's like a good Perfect one. Perfect example. The, have you heard the saying, pay yourself first? Pay yourself first. I've heard it. Explain it. Give me, it, give me it's some. It's basically saying that you're going through life and you're, the, the ultimate goal is to create freedom, right? It's not to make a lot of money. Money's just the, the vehicle to gain freedom. So if you want to gain freedom, you got to start paying for your freedom with saving investments. So whenever you get your paycheck... Rather than going paying someone else and buying something with it, pay yourself first. Pay, pay yourself, yourself first. first. Put that. Don't forget save to pay yourself first. Yeah. yeah so that's the same yep. concept. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I really love that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we, we have a lot of people that latch on to us because they want more in their lives, as we do. Yeah. So the 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 little inspiration and the motivation that I'm you know trying to to get to is, is I see it a lot that people just lack confidence, and I'm a firm believer like if you just start taking little action steps, yes. like you're saying your life will begin to change in a big way yes. over time. Yes. Right? I, I, I also think, and tell me if you agree with this, I think when you have a feedback loop of, of progress, oh, man. it helps immensely. Oh, big time. Uh, that and support circle. Yeah. In other words, there are people in your life that might be dragging you down mm. for whatever reason. Though That's not the people that you want to run with. You know. Uh, so I was saying, uh, I... I not my saying I got it from somewhere else West Side Barbell actually um, if you run with the lame you will develop a limp Ooh. so if, if, if you're you know with people that are thinking negative mm. right uh, have disempowering beliefs that's going to affect you it, whether you think it is or not and that's going to limit your confidence for whatever you're trying to do so sometimes you got to change your friends you know or keep away from some family members. Yep. I hate yeah, to say yeah, it. Yeah, it, that's it, true. I mean, it's just the way it is. Yep. And something I always say, and I, I firmly believe, we're fortunate enough that we're in a day and age where there's so much content where there's the right people yes. teaching and learning. Yes. So the best investment, like if you had $100, I would say buy AirPods. I think that's the best thing you could buy. Keep them in your ears yep. and just listen throughout the day to the people you want to aspire yes. to be yes. or get pieces from. Because yes. There's no excuse that, that anymore. That are feeding you good content yes. yeah, you know, that are going to empower you yeah. to be better. And it's just a, even a mindset of someone going out and achieving certain things. They have a way they speak about things, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, you know, there's an obstacle, like you're saying, that gets thrown at someone. And the person that is an optimist and has been successful is like, all right, well, how are we going to attack this? And they, the whole way they approach things, you start to take on. You know, the, all the podcasts we've listened to, I can hear people that you talk like Goggins and, you know, and I hear it in myself when I like Tim Ferriss and people that I, I've enjoyed, you hear yourself kind of, um, uh, taking pieces of them and spitting it to other people, yes, absolutely. right? Which is funny. Well, well, that's the best. So it's ironic you say that because I believe the best way to actually learn something 
is to really teach it to somebody yeah, else. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. Because you I take agree. you take a concept that you learned from somebody else. Now you put Mike Pirelli's spin on it. Now you got something that might be Tim Ferriss plus Mike Pirelli that Tim Ferriss didn't give yeah, the next 100%. person. Hundred percent. Right. Like when you when you're putting your knowledge, tying it to the doctors too. You're doing it in a way that's now spinning it. But people get it twisted. You know that it's a negative thing to teach, and we don't like we don't come here and teach. But my experiences plus my knowledge, absolutely, is what makes one third of the No Snooze podcast. Yep. yep. Right. Absolutely. And then Mike and, and obviously yeah. Claudio behind the scenes too. Um, but no, beautiful stuff, man. I, yeah. I, and, and I, so well, again, sorry and, for the and tangent. I think, I think that's where that saying pay it forward comes from also, mm. you mm-hmm. know, that, that's where that comes from also. And being of service to others, being of service to others. Yeah. Gratitude. Yep. You know, you're talking a lot about gratitude. Yep. You know, all that stuff comes into play. Yeah. Part of me has a problem giving advice because I feel like personally I have such a lofty goals and the fact that I'm not there yet, I have kind of an imposter syndrome of trying to tell someone what to do. That makes sense. I get so mad at him yeah. for this, by the way. Yeah. But it's just that's like, like a, a that's a I, limiting belief. It's a limiting of, belief. You know, like if yourself. someone in yep. real estate, for example, yeah, because you're me telling something. yourself, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there I'm yet. I'm not old enough. I'm not seasoned enough. I don't know if it's you know? seasoned or old enough. Or it's just, I'm I learned where this from I, someone where else. You want, where you think where you should be? Should be because I have such lofty. Mm-hmm. It's not that I'm like unhappy with it. It's just I feel like I don't have a voice to tell that. Like every time someone asks me for advice, I say, well, I do this. You know, I don't know what works for you and because I'm not. I think that, yeah, I, but that, I think that's. But that's the always best running in the back it, of my mind you know? is like, yeah. Yeah. is you know, and I don't know if other people share in that thought, but I, uh, for some reason, I always think of that, and it's just because I have the, I have a very clear vision of long term what mm-hmm. I want it to look like. But you're on, but you're, I'm on the right track. You're in the arena. Yeah, yeah, right? I'm at, you're absolutely. in the arena. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You're making the effort. Yeah. And you're on that road. Yeah. And you're, ta- you know? you're taking the steps. And you're taking no, the steps. Yeah, yeah. yeah and developing yeah. the habits. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you're laying the foundation to get there. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it's good that they're lofty goals. You got you that that's gives you yeah, it's purpose. Excitement. You know? excitement. That's that's part yeah. of your why. I kinda want to live to 120 now. Too. Yeah, no, it's fun. <laughs> Amazing. But to to your point, like one, I get mad at him for that. Yeah. Because he's so, mad. so many people, whether he likes it or not, they look to him yeah. as like you know, a source of motivation. Yep. And there's plenty of motivation going around, right? But he is so incredible in the aspects of his life, but he has this thing, which we all do, you just want to continuously do more, do more, do more, and you never sit back and really realize, wow, I'm in a good spot in my life. Right, And right. I'm That's taking these steps. That's interesting point you're bringing up, yeah. You know, but I, I don't know. I mean, you, know what you it say is? it really well, though, when he says... We do, we're documenting the rise. The rise, right? Exactly. Because like, exactly. the No Snooze podcast is going to pop. We know that. We know the only way it's not going to pop is if we jump off. Right. Yeah. Right? And it might take a year, two years, three, four. Who knows? You don't know. But you're in the arena. Right. We're here and we're taking the steps. Yep. Um, so, I don't know. I you know what like I think it is? I think there's just so many uh, things out there and everyone has a voice and there's some people have done nothing. Mike, and there's the, seven billion people in the world. No, no, yeah. and one third of them are on the internet. No, so, <laughs> right, right. It, it, seriously, this is what I'm you saying. The, my point being that I think the rise of the fake guru has ruined mm. that for me because mm. I'm, I'm. You're afraid of being that. Exactly. Yeah. But who I, said you're a guru? Uh, no, but the the people trying to teach people like you clearly have a background of action and you've done everything right you've clearly done a ton in your life you're very successful like i know i've been successful up to this point but you still have that because because of the arena we're in is plagued by that type of pitch because a lot of people like the get rich quick schemes Mm -hmm. they're the only person getting rich quick is the person pitching that so that's like you know something I, i think about I have a really not to get off have, topic. No, no, it's no, right no, it's on topic. Good. Yeah, somebody who's twenty or thirty years old, right, thirty-five maybe, and now you're in the arena with somebody like yourself. For us, what is something that at our age you can do to get closer to people like yourself? Hmm. Because I find, and I find this now in my life, and it's not offensive to my friends, to my boys, or any of that. I'm on the higher end of action, right? And not that people don't take action in their life, but like I am so focused and my clarity is so, I know exactly what I have to do to get to where I want. Whereas I see most of my boys are trying to figure that out. So I need to, you always say the network is your net worth. Yeah. I need to level up my network, 
right? So what is something that we can do to now get in the arena around people like yourself? Wow, that's an interesting, interesting question. Um, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind um, is don't be afraid. And I, I don't know if I like the way I'm wording this, but just off the top of my head, don't be afraid to, and this might sound oversimplified, but I'll explain, talk to a lot of people. Mm. I mean, literally. So, for example, mm. Mike and I see each other a lot at Coffee Cafe on Greenwich Avenue. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. It's just it's a coffee shop. You know what I mean? I have spoken to so many people in there, yeah. you know, by just saying good morning or hello or whatever and like approaching strangers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and have building up a conversation with them. And then I see him again and that carries on into a different book, you know, or connects me to somebody else and so forth and so on. So I think sometimes we're so within ourselves that we're not aware of our surroundings and there's a lot of information and a lot of knowledge and a lot of really nice people yeah that are around it's a good point you know but you got to take the time to you know hold the door for somebody you know what i'm saying in a sense and i just think that's one of the ways unknowingly sort of that i've done that you know, and, and met a lot of people in different walks is, man, don't be shy. Like, you know, and not uh, not everybody's going to want to talk to you or whatever, but, you know, you start up a, a conversation, you know, with with people. And that might sound a little bit off because people are like, you know, Internet today yeah. and, you know, everything's over Zoom and, you know, just but just pe person to person, man, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I and, think you make a good point, too. Yeah. Like something that my mindset shift at one point was when you meet someone new, you can learn something new from everyone, everyone right don't yes don't judge someone which is very like high level foo foo but you, no, you don't true. know what type of value they're going to bring to you not that everyone has mm -hmm. to bring you value mm -hmm. have a good conversation i i get energy from talking to people yep, yep. i can tell when i have good meetings throughout the day because i'm meeting a lot of people but just like the random barista that you chat with yes. has something some yes. story that blows your mind yes. and changes how you think and look at things yep. so yep. yeah and i wanted to ask that because of exactly what you're saying with the value a lot of people you know look at gary v right mm -hmm. he's i mean the guy in this in yep. this space yep. right yep. and he always talks about bringing value but i feel like some people struggle with i might not have value to bring to somebody yeah. and in reality if you take now what you're saying you being a genuine person going out of your way and putting effort in could potentially be valuable, right? Because you can have a millionaire, a billionaire that really just doesn't have a, somebody who's leaning on them for the right reasons. It might just be everybody's trying to suck their money from them. So mm -hmm. if you are conscious of, you know what, I'm going to smile at every person. I'm going to hold the door for every person. I'm going to walk into the same spot if I'm seeing somebody. Yep. And just doing those little things, and it's funny because it all ties back. Little things create major changes in people's exactly. lives, right? Yeah, exactly. And not, not everybody's receptive. Don't get me wrong. Oh but, no, you know, of course. Whatever. I mean, people are people. You, you, and you should just see don't right take now. that personally. Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed. How many emails I send? I don't even get a response. Right. Oh yeah, that's, and that's just yeah. game to no. know. Yeah. yeah, that's just you know. Yeah, yeah. People are people. Right. People oh, are busy. Like and whatever. I, and I, and I but you don't that. let that bother you. No, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. You don't. And, you don't let that bother you. And it is true. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. Because right. exactly. There's a lot of people get a lot of opportunities because they had, had a good conversation at a coffee shop, and the person liked their attitude. Yes. And they said, "I can work with that person." Yes. They, they bet on the jockey. Yes. They don't bet on the horse. Yeah, right. Right. Which leads me. Uh, I'll throw this into. And I think you're sort of alluring to it here is, ask. Hmm. Like ask don't be afraid to ask so for example when i was trying to raise money for this yep. new business you know in longevity that we were going to launch before before covid hit i would be in the habit of asking people this is what i'm doing you know and can i pitch you on my idea some people would say sure and then say no <laughs> some <laughs> yeah. people would say no up front but hey i wasn't shy about just asking yep. you know yep. i think i even asked you hey if you know anybody you did, yep. that's in this space mm -hmm. that might be interested in investing in this idea let me know i'd like to meet them but you know to your point also the language you use is important it's not yes. i'm trying to do this thing it's i'm doing I'm this doing thing it. yep so it's the it's the confidence yep. of you're taking the action of doing this, and if you want to jump on this train to the top, you can jump on. Yeah. Versus, I'm trying to get it out of the station. Yes. Can yeah. you help me put yeah, some right, oil in? Right. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. Seasoned 
veteran like yourself, when is, <laughs> I'm asking for a friend, <laughs> when is too much, too much? I am very infatuated with doing few things in my life and doing them extremely well mm. versus trying to do all these different things, as Mike would say, throwing darts at the board and hoping it sticks. It was thick. Right? <laughs> and, and, and I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about four other people. Yeah. I want to hear from you. Yeah. Somebody who's trying to like really figure it out, yeah. right? Is it worth it to now go try a whole bunch of things or take something that you're like good at and yeah. then like focus on like building that? Mm. I, yeah, I think it again comes back to, I'm gonna come back, I hope I'm not being too redundant here, but it comes back to your why, finding out what that is. Because everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody, not everybody, a lot of people like to ask like, what is my purpose in life, right? That's kind of like, you know, what is my, pur I'm a dad, I'm a businessman, like, but you know, what else, you know, what, what, what else? And to truly find that why and your purpose in life, uh, you gotta follow your passion. You know what I mean? And when you follow your passion, I think then you're able to uncover a lot of those answers that people might be seeking or, you know, that you might be seeking. So I'm a big believer in find out what you love. And this is not for everybody, but uh, I'm more, me personally, and it's worked out for me, I'm more apt to be the, the starving artist. In other words, I love and I've always loved fitness, health, wellness, sports, longevity, you know, they're all connected. I was going to do that no matter what, you know, even when I went through the hard times, 2010, I wasn't like in 2010, well, I just got this business divorce. Uh, I guess I got to switch careers now and yeah. I'm going to go do something completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, when, when his head is back together again, I'm still in the same industry because that's my passion mm. for better or worse, you know? So I think, to examine your conscience, find out what your why is, take your time to really meditate, sit still on that, you know, and discover what that is. So instead of throwing darts at the board and saying, let me try this, let me try that, let me try that, I'm more apt to be like, this is what I believe my calling is. This is, my, yeah. this is what I'm really, really interested in. So and just go for I it. I love that. And, I, and then go all in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. once you find, once you know what that is, then yeah. you don't say, Again, words are important, right? Empowering beliefs. Now, well, I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to see if it works. I have a plan go. B. If it doesn't work, maybe I'll do something else. Hell no. That's it. Once you, go. That's it. Boom. I'm on it. And I'm not coming. Nobody's going to knock me off. I'm not going to fail. Yeah. Because even if I get knocked off, I didn't fail. I'm going to learn from the obstacle and come back stronger. My God. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to get. And I've been knocked off. Everybody gets knocked off. You know, you might have a down year, right? You're not going to give up. You're going to figure some stuff out and move forward. And when you find your that. passion, that that's I totally agree. But I feel like a lot of people don't do enough to find their passion mm, first, right? Yes. Like you were fortunate where fear. That's fear. Yeah, that's I mean, I was fear. fortunate yes. to find it pretty early. I tried a lot of stuff mm -hmm, before real mm -hmm. estate. You know. Yep. Yep. So took you some time. Yeah, but it you took got me time. There. But I tried a ton of stuff. Yeah. And then when it clicked, and it's okay. You you kind of realize what you know what your lane is and you get that tunnel vision yeah, yeah. but i think a lot of people don't even try enough yeah. to realize what they want yeah, to do yeah so i guess early on you know mm -hmm. right out of college yeah. college whatever you might be throwing some of those darts around yeah. if you don't really know you know right. what the passion is um and it's good to experiment then you yeah. know but something's got to turn you on right yeah. and you'll know when that light goes off like when something really energizes you yeah. and you wake up in the morning just with so much passion for that then that's, that's your that's your that's yeah. your calling. All right, so I know we're coming up on on some time here. Um, if you can give three, qu uh, I hate the word quick, but three simple keys that you would advise someone in their twenties or thirties to set them up for success in their fifties and beyond. Wow, Ooh, good question. And, and yeah. honestly, good. the answer is go listen to questions. the whole podcast. But <laughs> yeah. but if there was like three simple things that you can. You know, really say, look, this is proven yeah. through my 30 years of work. That's, yeah. Tough. And you live it, right? Yep, so, yep, like, you have yep. to have, and it, even if you think it's basic yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Well, the first thing I would say is, is discover that passion. Take your time to unfold, unravel, discover that why, find that passion. And then once you find it, 
go all in. No plan B. There can't be a plan B. And burn the boats. Burn the boats. Exactly. Yeah, for real. That's exactly how, how I would how I would describe it. And then believe in yourself. Develop that confidence. And that takes practice. It's like playing football, lifting weights. It's repetition, right? And so whatever tools you utilize to develop that muscle, right? In the brain and the heart. In the, in the physical body, it's got to be repetitive. It's something to be done every day. It's a, it's a habit, right? But that doesn't mean some, some are automatic, but at the same time, some have to be thought about every day, daily, and then committed to and do them over and over and over. So believe in yourself. Develop that confidence. Develop those habits. And then the third thing I would say is don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, and instead of letting those destroy you and ruin your world, learn from them. Mm. They were put there for a reason, whether you believe in God or whatever. But those obstacles came into your life to teach you something. So don't let them stop you, but empower you. Learn from them and get back on track. Because you're going to fall. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to fall. But that doesn't, like you were saying before in a different podcast, again, it doesn't mean that you failed. You know what I'm saying? You just dust yourself off, keep going. And you're going to get knocked down. That's life. And in fact, I think that might be one of the things ultimately, like if you ask me one thing, is we try to make everything so comfortable for us today. You know, everything is about efficiency and comfort. But I don't think that that's the way. I think the way is to struggle a little bit. You see what I'm saying? And work hard and make some mistakes and maybe fall down a couple of times and suffer some losses because that's what makes you stronger. And part of me thinks too, and tell me if you agree, when you do suffer the losses, you have to get back on the horse as fast as possible. Fast as possible. Because yes. then you don't get in your head. And that's head. different for everybody. Like, what does that mean? Does that mean an hour? And I, I don't as know. As soon as possible. I, but as soon that's as what you I can. As soon yep. as possible for you. Well, yeah. yeah, for yeah. sure. Because yeah. Yeah. then you start rethinking, you know, what we just talked about. You start thinking, ah, oh, I should have done this. Yeah. I should have done that. Yep. Yep. Whereas that energy could be going towards getting the next person or yes. doing the next thing yes. with the wife. Or yep. Yep. You screw up a date yep. night. Make one the next day. Make one the next Make day. Make the memory yep. short. Yep. Get back. Get, yeah. get back. Yep. Order a yep. pizza. And then, and then I, I think, I don't know if I'm on four now, but surround yourself with like-minded people. Mm. you got to surround yourself with like-minded people, not people that are going to drag you down, people that are you know negative beliefs and so forth and so on. Find the right crew to run with and stick to those people. Mm. You wow. know, And people may come and go. People may come and go, You know, but you want to find people that are like-minded. Mm. And then stay, stay in that circle. You know, you know or build a new one. What? Thank you, Pete. You, you know what I'm always uh, intrigued by, though? I love hearing the same type of things because it lets you know that you're on the right path. Repetition, mm-hmm. man. Repetition. But then having your own little twist to it is yeah. what, to me, like that gets me high. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I love hearing things that, okay, I know we need to be doing. Okay, yeah, we've, we're doing them. But then getting your spin on it makes it like... Incredible for me. Yeah, yeah. Now, that was life, I'm being selfish here, right? That was three keys to life. Now, if you want to sustain this physically, mentally, in your 50s and beyond, three things to somebody in their 20s and 30s that they should be doing. So, like, yeah. is sleep on, sleep is sleep, obviously. Sleep is number one. I think it starts there. And I think. No snooze to kind of snooze. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because think about it, right? If you're. if Don't snooze on your sleep. Re- yeah, there don't you snooze go. on your sleep, right? And if you're. If you need to hit that snooze button, right, you are lacking in two things. One is you're not giving yourself enough sleep, so you can't be the best version of yourself and anyway. Scientifically, snoozing actually sucks. It's not good for you. It's, it's it actually adds, bad. There's no, there's no benefit. Right. You know, exactly. There, there's no benefit. So if you need to hit that snooze button, then you haven't really taken care of your sleep where you need to, right? And then the second thing is if you have to hit that snooze button, that why you haven't discovered that, but it's not there because otherwise you'd be jumping out of bed. That's a good one. You see what I'm saying? That's a good one. If yeah. I know that I got something, I have a purpose, right? And if I have a purpose tomorrow and I know what that purpose is, man, well, I'm not going to hit snooze. I don't want to miss that. Right. A good example. I want to be a part of that. It is kind of tongue in cheek, but a good example is all these people I know don't wake up 
like when they need to for regular things. When they have a round of golf, oh, they're out. Could be three a.m. Yep. People yep. are up exactly. Yep. So it's yep. like that's a very yeah. simple example. But yeah, when you want to do something, get up. Yeah, exactly. So sleep is one. Sleep is definitely one. Two is actually again. I'm going to repeat it. Sorry if it's if it's kind of redundant. No, but no, no, no. But, it's, but, uh, but it's, you're you're living yeah. this right. But so it, it's it's mindset, you know, hmm. and and it's developing empowering beliefs about yourself, you know, and telling yourself good self talk. You know, if you're telling yourself that you're a piece of you know what and you're constantly ragging on yourself, eh. You, Do you have something you tell yourself all the time? Yeah, I like to go to different, uh, I guess, whatever you want to call them, um, mantras or... Yeah, yeah. Wait, no, save it, though. We, no, we I have know, a whole mantra it, section at the end. Well, I don't, don't, I don't know if his now. mantra is like a short one that he well, preaches to on, himself. Oh, okay, okay. You know, yeah, but so it'll depend on, you know, sometimes... So one of the things... This probably wouldn't be my third thing. So my third thing would be nutrition. We'll get to that in a second. But it's lowering stress. You know what I mean? Like instead of living like somebody pisses you off, you get angry, something doesn't go your way, you get upset. You know, it used to take me days to calm down from something like that. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd hold a grudge, mm. so to speak. You know what I mean? And then I learned to get it down to hours. Now, if I get irritated, aggravated, whatever it is, minutes it's gone. I got, I got it down to minutes. Wow. Through breathing and, you know, meditation, stillness, prayer, you develop your own habit, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think getting yourself centered again so that you can move forward, mm. you know, is is a, is a huge part of it. Um, but the third thing to get back to your question would then be the food. Food is medicine. Food is medicine. The foods that you choose to put into your body or not put into your body at 20 do affect you at 50, 60, 70, and 80. What about 30? Asking for a friend. <laughs> so same, same concept, though? Like it's same, not too late uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I would, I would tell you, no. It's not too late. Hell right? no. It's not too late right. for no. anyone. No. Yeah, exactly. Fast. It really is. Just fast one Monday, yeah. and then you're back in shape, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's really ever too late. So 30, man, that's... So it's Learn wild. this stuff and practice If you live to 120, now. you're one-fourth in. Think about that. That's true. But what's wild on your list, right? And I'm being honest here. Two out of the three, I'm not really optimizing right Yet. now. Yet. Because if I'm sleeping six hours, I was, I you so were gonna sleep say isn't one. The beliefs, don't worry about that. I got, got that one that. on lock. Yeah, you got that, which is well, great. Almost too much. I literally... Uh, I, no, I, I don't think there is... My man's got more <laughs> mirrors in his house than a fun house. <laughs> and no, I I use, but I use it to my advantage, yes, right? Yes. And, and this is probably repetitive really to doesn't, people. Though. But I bring my daughter to the mirror. She's an infant, Pete. Yep. And I rub her back and I say, look how beautiful you are. I believe it. No, I believe Just it. Just to instill some extra confidence, right? Uh, so well, the tell beliefs, everyone who she looks like. The What? Tell everyone who she looks like. Kind of resembles me a little yeah. bit. I tell my daughter every morning she's beautiful because she's like... <laughs> <laughs> but so the first thing I'm not doing like to my to the best of my ability to optimize and then the, the second thing that I am doing the third thing the food I think from you know what I've learned today I'm eating too much red meat as if I'm like performing for something I have an intestinal issue that I think I need to be like more mindful of so it's unbelievable to me that yeah I think I'm at a good point in my life but to reach peak performance, I'm lacking two of the three things that you just said. Yeah. And it, I love that, the, honestly. The nutrition, the thing I like about nutrition, it's such a rabbit hole. Wherever you want to take it, you can go so deep. Yeah. It's yeah, wild. Yeah. And you should change the name to Pete Performance instead of Pete. Mm, uh -huh. It sounds similar. I like that. Uh, how about Pete's Peak Performance? Oh. That's e Triple P. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's good stuff. Um, Pete, before we get to the last question that yep. I like to ask our guests. Can you please let everybody know where they can find you? Mm. Uh, whether sure. they want to network with you, business opportunities, seek yeah, you man. out. Look for the um, guy in the red glasses walking around. <laughs> <laughs> red or yellow, usually. Yeah. 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 Look for the <laughs> guy who says he's on. 50, but yeah. he looks like he's 28. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Olive oil tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even get into peptides. We'll have to do that. We'll on do that. Oh, yeah. So, oh, th that's another show. Next time you come on, I'll have a six pack. Yeah. You, are, you are coming back big time. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, my company name is Team Apollon. Uh, so it's teamapollon.com. Uh, That's with Apollon with two P's and two L's. Got you. O L um, A P P, -P -O, -L. O L. Yeah, yep. A P P O L L O N. What's gotcha. Apollon? Yeah. So I love. 
as an aside, I love history. Mm. Um, and in this case, the history of strength. Um, so there was a strong man in France back in the 19th century by the name of Louis Apollon, oh. who lived at that what would have been at that time sort of an equivalent Don't lifestyle. Don't tell me 120. You know, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Did he really? So, yeah, so, yeah, we lived, you know, sort of an equivalent lifestyle, sort of uh, more plant-based and, and mm. so forth. Um, and, uh, you know, was, you know, one of the circus performers, so yeah, to speak, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I just kind of latched on to that story, reading about him one day, and I want to have a, kind of a different name. So I like wow. it. All right, so that. TeamApplon.com. Yep. TeamApplon. So, yeah, so that same thing on Instagram, Team Apollon, same thing on Facebook. Yep. That's awesome. Nice yep. and easy, simple yeah. across the board. Yep. Yep. That's and great. And the team, of course, is me and Jilly. Yep. You yep. Know. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Now, my favorite part of this podcast. Well, I'll say that the next time too. When we get into Dave's dime of the week, we're not there yet. When you wake up in the morning, and you're not here, and you're not motivated, and you want to technically snooze on your life. Yep. But you know that you still have to get up every single day. Because we can't possibly, as human beings, be motivated all the time. What drives you during those tough days? I love that question. And actually, I'm going to disagree with you. I think we can do it every single time because it's the, the, the development of those habits. So Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Are you, you're, you're saying that you can wake up motivated every day? Every day. Every, if, when you discover your why, discover that purpose, what your purpose is. I'm going to get real vulgar here. Right? And develop the habits that keep you. So I, I think of it as uh, you're in real estate, right? That is correct. So I think of it, think about your house for a second, right? You might move some furniture around, rearrange some stuff. But usually if you're redecorating the kitchen, for example, you never really change for the most part, let's say 99% of the time, nobody ever really changes where the refrigerator goes. You know what I mean? It's kind of like got its spot. You might move some tables around or what, but that refrigerator is like, it's always there. You could find it in the dark. You get up in the night, it's dark. You need a drink of water. You go to, you can find it. So I develop a mindset that is related to my purpose, to my why, which in my case is coaching and, and helping people. I lo I'm at my best when I'm helping you, when I'm empowering you to be the best, best version of yourself. So that's, that's my why, right? And that doesn't move. That's my fridge. So if I ever find myself getting off track for a moment, I come right back to that why. Well, that's right your answer. Right back to that purpose. Hit the fridge. That, that, that's your answer, though. Because you just said, if I find myself coming off for the moment. Right back. I get back. I get right back. I'm trying back. to get away from the fridge. So this is, <laughs> but that, that, that's the answer. Because <laughs> I'll use a better analogy yeah. next time. <laughs> I, I struggled with this for a long mm -hmm. time. Like, I believed almost in my head that as humans, you can be motivated every single day. To me, I don't think you can. I think you have to get back to that. Yeah. And so the amount of time, so it used to be I would fall off, you know, maybe a day, maybe an hour. Now I fall off maybe 30 seconds. I'm not kidding. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so, if I, the moment I feel, I know exactly what I have to do to get back. And a, I guess a perfect example of this, right? To, to break this down. Say, God forbid, somebody really close to you passed away. And you knew that no matter what, you still had to wake up that next morning and go train somebody because you couldn't cancel for right. whatever reason. Cool. It, was, yep. it was the biggest event of that person's life. And you were like, you know what? I just can't do it. So clearly you're not motivated because you just suffered a crazy loss. I'm always interested to hear how do you still go? And that's what I like to leave people yep. with, yep. you know? Yep. Uh, but I think your answer from what you're saying was to you'll be off track for a short amount of time, but you rely on your habits that you habits, built. Yep. Yep. And so that's mindset. Like I know what my why is. I know what my purpose is and I don't stray from it. You know, and if I just I'm talking about stray like a tiny bit, I, I can feel it. It's I can about. sense it. And then, then I have developed tools that get me back there. So and I have a couple of them actually that work. Give them to us. They range from I could jump in a cold shower. I mean, ice cold shower. Yep. Get in there and that boom changes my state. You see what I'm saying? Um, the other thing is I'll go for a walk. We, mm -hmm. didn't, we, we forgot to get into the walking aspect. Yes. I'll just go for a walk. And I don't mean like walk five miles. I mean, I'll walk around the block. You know what I mean? But just to get up and get just moving. Just to get, fresh get air. You got to be yeah, because you have to change your environment sometimes. And your change state. Your, you know, if I'm sitting, I'm going to stand up right. and I'll go for a walk. You're right. Change your state. I you tell know? people, put your feet on the floor. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, I might, um, on my way to go for a walk, there's a, a 
a church within you know sh- very short walking distance i might go in there and sometimes not even pray i might just meditate like sit still like just breathe like you know try to just be calm hmm. and then come out and i'm ready to go again yeah. so you develop these different things that each pe- person might be a little bit different when you find what works for you that bring you right back quickly yeah quickly you know and and i think if you can develop those habits find out what works for you remember your why and constantly come back to it i love it it's a great answer thank you don't make fun of us but we do a little corny thing here at the end go for it and this will bring us to dave's dime of the week dimes 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 and i got this one for pete too so I'm, I'm, i'm gonna read it most people when they reach a certain age let down and talk about what they used to do. Well, who gives a damn about what you used to do? It's what you're doing now. Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne. Wow. Right. The That's juicer, awesome. right? That's awesome. He's the juicer. Um, I want to thank CV for running and grabbing my phone, so I am prepared for this <laughs> mantra. And this is Miguelito's mantra. Ito, Ito, Ito. Sorry, and, Pete. <laughs> and the, the quote I pulled today was, is the body I will have in maybe a month, two months uh, from the gentleman who looks, I'll look like him. Uh, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. Bruce Lee. Wow. Ooh. I like both of those. Aww. <laughs> Rip shirt off. That is good. Uh, Pete, a mantra, a favorite quote of yours that you like to live by something that you can uh you know send the listeners away with yeah no plan b all in whoa no no plan b whoa and Burn i love that that was boats. just so that's it no plan b all in there's that's, that's yeah. yeah i love it no, I love but the way sweeper. that just came out no too like that's it. And, it and it's just take the action take Go. the action that's Go. it yeah no plan b wow that's it man pete we thank you, man. My, thank you. Thank you, guys. It's been my pleasure. Seriously. Until next time, stop snoozing. Get up. Get after it. Wow, Pete. Talk to me about these peptides. Yeah. <laughs> That's another Epi in the Books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze.